This is a video I am very excited to make. It's all about health. It's about the symptoms of health. Just like strength and just like illness, health really is relative to the individual. If at once you were really weak and you couldn't even do a single push-up, and now you're able to do five push-ups, you might think you're pretty strong. But compared to someone who can do 50 push-ups, you know, doing five isn't that strong. And the same goes with illness. You know, if you're, if you only have just a few symptoms of illness, compared to someone who's like on their deathbed dying from some disease, or someone who's just got the most horrendous cough, but you just have a light little tickle cough, and you might think, oh, you're not that sick. So it's, it's relative, and same goes for health. Health is relative, differs for everyone. But these are some of the symptoms, some of the signs that are common for everyone who's experiencing what they consider to be good levels of health, great levels of health. And I took notes the other day walking, so I'm gonna keep referring to those notes because there's a lot of symptoms of health and I don't want to miss them. The first one is appreciation and respect for nature. Like if you can appreciate nature around you and you can respect it, like you don't feel like you need to destroy it, that's very healthy. It's very healthy to respect and appreciate nature. If you can stand in awe, stand in awe at a tree or a flower, then um, that's quite healthy. Next is the ability to laugh and smile easily. If you're laughing and smiling a lot, genuine smiles, genuine laughs, that's very healthy as well. I think laughter really is the best medicine. And when you're taking a daily, daily laughter, and that's extremely healthy. Extremely healthy. And the opposite, like if you're angry and you're not smiling, you're frowning, that's, that, that you're, at di you're at a dis-ease right there, you know? When you're laughing and you're smiling, you're at ease. It's the opposite of disease. Next one is uh, no stinky poops. I think it's healthy if you don't have stinky poops. If your poops stink like rotting animals, that's because there's rotting animals inside you probably. So it's very healthy to be going to the toilet, going number two, two, three, four times a day. It's very healthy to keep things flowing, keep things flowing. Next up is the ability to fall asleep easily when you hit the sack. I think it's very healthy to be able to fall asleep easily. One of the things that all of the longest living people have in common is their ability to relax. They all are very relaxed. And if you can fall asleep really easily, you know, it's, it's a sign of good health right there. And the opposite, you just look at the opposite. People can't fall asleep at all, they get insomnia. That's not healthy, man. That leads to all sorts of diseases. Next up is, uh, just the ability to go for long walks without fatigue. If you can walk for two, three, four hours without the need for food or anything, water even. Am I in focus? Hope so. If you can go for long walks and not worry about a thing. Not worry about your your legs falling off or running out of breath or whatever, then that's quite healthy as well. Next up is an appetite for healthy food. And if you've got an appetite for really shitty food, that's not healthy, man. You know, when you eat really good food, you're gonna experience a really good mood. Everything is energy, especially fresh raw living foods, man. So that's really healthy to have an appetite for healthy foods. If you have a desire for apples and oranges and melons and green juice, that's really healthy. So if you ever find yourself having this desire, people say they crave certain fruit to crave vegetables. I don't really think you crave fruit, man. I think you crave drugs. Instead of craving fruit, you have a desire. You have this lust towards healthy food. That's healthy. Next up is, uh, one of the symptoms of health is being more active in your creation rather than consumption. I don't think it's healthy to sit and passively consume TV for four or five hours. 
And I think people who do that every day, sit passively consume content, are not the healthiest people on the planet. The people who are producing, the people who are creating, healthy man, healthy. They got that vital energy flowing through them that wants to create, that wants to grow, that wants to sprout forth. It's very healthy. Um, next up is just the ability to be alone with oneself and one's thoughts without any exterior distractions for extended periods of time. So if you can sit and meditate for 30 minutes, that's incredibly healthy. If you can sit and meditate for an hour, that's even healthier, man. Like, if you can't sit still for at least five minutes and meditate, I don't think that's very healthy. So just practicing being alone with oneself, with no drugs either. Some people need to like, you know, smoke weed to just sit still and calm down. But if you can do it substance free, that's very healthy. And that's, that's my next point right there, is just, Going through your days substance free, not relying on balls and chains, not relying on medications or caffeine or nicotine or any sort of substance to change your state of mind. If you can rely solely on your mind and your heart to elicit good emotions, and you don't need some drug or pill or medication or whatever to change the way you feel, that's really healthy. Uh, another one here is the ability to hold your breath for 60 seconds. I mean, if you can't hold your breath for a minute, like like I said, this is all relative, but I think it's, it's a healthy, you've got healthy lungs if you can hold your breath for a minute. I really think most people should be able to hold their breath for a minute. Um, if you can't do that, then you probably got some training to do, or you might have some lung issues that need overcoming. Um, and the next one has to do with balance. Being able, being able to stand on one leg for a minute, I think that's really healthy as well. People who don't aren't balanced at all, that's not really healthy, man. Like, a lot of people get in their 70s, 80s, 90s, they lose their balance, they fall down, break a hip. Within a couple of years, they're dead after they break a hip. That's a statistic, man. It's just your quality of life goes way down when you get a broken hip. Man, so being able to stand on one leg for at least a minute, that's healthy. Um, another one, this one you guys might think is gross, but the ability to drink your own urine without being grossed out by it. Like if you can't recycle what's coming out of you, I don't know, why, why, why would that be so gross if it tastes fine? And if it doesn't taste fine, why doesn't it taste fine? So I just started drinking my own urine every now and then a few months ago and yeah, at first I thought it was horrendous. I mean, I think it tastes horrendous, I thought it tasted great, I thought it tasted like coconut water, but I thought the idea of it would be horrendous. Then I go have a sip and I'm like, oh, it tastes fine. And I think if it tasted like crap, then I'd be worried, like, why does mine taste like crap? That's not good. So, I think your urine should taste good. It's a sign of health. It's a symptom of health. Next up is the desire to learn more and improve one's life in all areas. So if you're open for improvement, that's very healthy. If you're closed off and you don't want to improve or you, or you don't want to learn anything new, you think you, you, think you know it all, Satisfaction is the death blow, man. Never get satisfied. Be happy with, with what you've got. Be happy with where you're at. Be happy with what you know. Be happy with what you've got in your life. Yeah, for sure, be happy, but never satisfied. Never satisfied. Satisfaction is the death blow. I think when people are ready to die, they're not really willing to learn much more. They're like, it's okay, I don't need to know that. I'm gonna die in a few days. They're just ready to die. Don't be so closed off to learning new things, especially if you're not on your deathbed. If you're on your deathbed, do whatever you want. I mean, you probably got a lot of things to teach me and the rest of the world, but if you're watching this video and you're between the ages of 18 and 80, keep having an open mind. Hey, if you're younger than 18 too, comment down below. Let me know if you're young and watching this. Uh, but yeah, that's very healthy to have a desire to learn more and improve yourself want to improve yourself people with depression They don't want to learn anything. They don't, they don't have a desire to, to really get out of bed and Learn something new take on something take on a big challenge And I don't think depression is very healthy it doesn't feel good. That's for sure But uh, the opposite is healthy having a strong desire to learn anyways next up enough of that Feelings of curiosity, feelings of strong curiosity. It goes hand in hand with wanting to learn. But just being curious, wanting to explore the area, 
Hey, what's around there? What's around there? What's around there? What's this? Asking a lot of questions. Little kids do this all the time. Little kids are the healthiest humans on the planet. Hopefully, if they're eating plant foods. Little kids, they come out and they're just perfectly healthy most of the time. And they've got a strong curiosity. I think it's important. We can learn a lot from kids. One of the things we can learn a lot from is being curious about everything. Coming at everything with a beginner's mind is huge. That's really healthy. Uh, next one is feelings of self-worth regardless of exterior awards or compliments from others. Feelings of your own self-worth. Do you impress yourself or do you constantly seek other people to impress? Do you constantly seek other people's thumbs up? Do you care what other people think of your jacket? your shoes of your haircut because most people don't give a shit and it's quite unhealthy to constantly be seeking out validation from other people and it's extremely healthy to be just confident with yourself that's extremely healthy and very attractive for both sexes men are attracted to guys who are confident men are attracted to women who are confident women are attracted to women who are confident women are attracted to men who are confident it's just a very attractive trait to be confident in yourself and it's it's it's, it's so healthy that's why man it's just so healthy um, next up is good posture I mean if you're constantly walking around like this like hey I'm the healthiest person on the planet yeah right you look at your posture what if you're walking around like this like, hey, I'm the healthiest person on the planet much more believable right good posture man let the energy flow through the nervous system much easier people turning in there um, Next up is tan skin. You know, people on their deathbed or people in the hospital, they're quite pale often. You say they're deathly pale, right? Deathly pale. Ghostly white. Like that car. But if you're tanned, like it's very rare to see someone extremely tanned in the uh, hospital bed. Most people in the hospital bed, they're just white, they're pale. It's an unhealthy color because when you've got tan, it's just a symptom that you've got enough vitamin D and vitamin D. Really, it's not even a vitamin, it's a hormone. Making sure everything's functioning optimally. So tan skin is another symptom of health. And then this one is the last one I have on my list here. And it's probably the most powerful symptom, if there is such a thing. It is... S strong feelings of strong and stable feelings of love strong and stable feelings of love if you feel completely unloved you're ready to check out you're ready to commit suicide really it's a really unhealthy vibration to be emitting but uh, the opposite the feeling of love Wow, wow, everything is beautiful when you're in love. Everything is beautiful. This house right there, the crows in the sky, you probably can't see right now because the settings on this camera. And the camera itself, the, 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 the temperature, the cold temperature right now, the, the fact that my fingers are slowing down a bit because they're getting a bit cold, I can't move them as quickly as when they're warm. This person's nice little garden, like, everything is beautiful and perfect when you're in love. You see the world as being just this heaven on earth when you're in love. And there's a lot of people who take drugs to feel this way. There's a lot of people who take drugs to feel this way. And I've taken them myself, I know. From personal experience, I'll say I used to take drugs to feel like I was in love with planet earth. Many drugs do this, most drugs do this, even caffeine. Even caffeine will boost your mood to a point where you're just like, oh, everything's perfect. But there's always a crash, there's always a come down with that stuff. So that's not healthy, that's not healthy. Like I said, you don't want to depend on a substance. But being able to elicit these feelings of love and just like the first one I said, appreciation for, for nature and really everything on your own, that's healthy, man. That's really healthy. It's really healthy. Like. It's really interesting how like, when you're feeling completely unloved and you just want to kill yourself or you just want to die because you're just so 
in the hole. Nothing's worth living for anymore. You're ready to clock out. The opposite of being extremely in love with life is almost the same thing. Like you're, you're so in love with life that you could die and everything would be okay. You know, it's, it's gonna be okay. I know when, whenever I get like a great shot on photo or video, I'm just so happy. I'm like, yes, I got it. Like, I can die now. I'm, I'm totally, I'm at least momentarily satisfied in that, in that little short moment, that blip of the photo I took, the, the shot I captured. I'm just so happy I could die. No, so happy I could go to heaven. So it's interesting, those two extremes of extreme unlove and extreme love, you both, you're ready to move on to the next dimension. Um, and I remember watching videos of people like giving, you know, getting interviewed about what it's like to die. These people had died and come back. Like they were like clinically dead for a minute or so or a few minutes and then they got revived, they got brought back to life. And one lady said, she said, I just remember being in this place and knowing that everything back on earth was going to be okay. Everything's going to be okay. There's nothing to worry about. Didn't need to worry about my friends or my family or anything on earth. It was going to be okay. And it just felt totally at peace and perfect with the universe and everything. And then she's like, she's like, it just felt so good there. And then when I came back to earth, I had to try and like remember that. Remember that knowingness that everything's perfect, everything's gonna be okay. And she was just in nirvana, in absolute ecstasy when she had gone over to the other side. Um, and she said coming back, back to life was painful, realizing that she had a body again and she had this ego. And yeah, but anyways, this video's gone on long enough, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, I hope to make more videos like this because it's, I think it's really important for me at least, to focus on what I want in life. And if I'm constantly focusing on um, what not to do, like how not to do this and how not to do this and mistakes this and mistakes that, then you might end up experiencing those things that you're trying to avoid just, just by focusing on them. So it's very important to focus on what you do want. And by making videos about the symptoms of health, rather than symptoms of, of disease or whatever, then um, you're much more likely to experience these symptoms of health. And there are things you can do right away, right today, right after you watch this video, that will have you feeling a little bit healthier. Just a little bit healthier. And one of those things that you can do is meditate for 60 seconds. You can sit and you can meditate. You can set the timer on your phone, or on your computer, for 60 seconds and you can meditate. Just close your eyes and sit there and you will feel so much healthier, I promise. That's one little thing for you guys. That's the call to action for today. Meditate for a minute. And if you do meditate for a minute, let everyone know. I want to see how many people actually meditate for a minute. You can just comment below and say, I meditated or the meditation felt great or whatever. Just mention something about the meditation in the comments down below that would really make this video come full circle, letting me know that other people are actually taking action from a video that I'm making here standing in Canada. It's my new running shoes. How's that? All right, peace out, guys. Put these shoes to the test.